Hi, this is Rick, and this is Christianity 101. Before we even open the letter of Romans and begin to read the text, there is some background information that's going to be helpful for us to know so that when we read the text, we'll understand the why behind Paul's writing. So uh, if you've grabbed one of these, you're welcome to. I believe that you can also just email me or ask me for a download. I can send it to you as PDF as well. Um, so here we go. Background information of Romans. First, I want to talk about the author. The letter of Romans was written by Paul, Paul of Tarsus. He was a Pharisee. He began as a Pharisee, well-educated as a Pharisee, one of the most educated Pharisees, so he was doing really well for himself. He was called to be an apostle. I'm not going to get into that right now because that's in the first uh, first couple of verses of Romans. Uh, God called him to to communicate the gospel to the Gentiles. So one of the reasons why he wrote the letter of Romans was to communicate the gospel to the Gentiles, which are people who are not Jewish. So that probably includes, it definitely includes me and probably includes you too. He was a pioneer missionary of the church. So he was a true, honest to goodness trailblazer. He went through, um, through the world, who uh, a, a large chunk of the world that had never heard about the, Jesus before, never heard the gospel, and began to talk to people. For going first to the Jews, they mostly rejected him. Then going to the Gentiles to preach the good news about Jesus. The good news meaning that faith in Jesus leads to salvation. He had triple citizenship. And you can follow along in this booklet if you have it with you. Triple citizenship. So first of all, he was Jewish. And that's really his earthly, his first citizenship is he, he was a Jew. Second of all, he was Roman. And we're going to see how this helped him get to Rome a little bit later and how the story unfolds because he's a Roman citizen later. It's important to understand that. But his first allegiance and his first citizenship was to heaven. He was called by God. He believed. He placed his faith in Jesus. So he received salvation. His first loyalty was to heaven. Let's talk about Paul's missionary journeys. He, Paul spent three years in Damascus, and then he went to Jerusalem. He was actually sponsored by Barnabas when he went to Jerusalem. One of, Paul's, one of the troubles that Paul had when he first became a Christian was acceptance by other Christians, because before he came to Christ, he persecuted the church. He murdered the church. The first recorded Christian martyr was Stephen. And uh, we see that Paul wasn't the one holding the stones. Paul was in the background holding the coats of the people that he told, go kill Stephen. So he was one of the leaders persecuting the church. So, so Barnabas sponsored him uh, so, that he, so that Paul would be received in Jerusalem and accepted as one of the members. Yeah, he, uh, he spent um, about eight years in Antioch. And, uh, and then after that, the first missionary journey started. His first missionary journey was to Cyprus and Pamphylia, then, then Galatia. He had two other missionary trips after that, where he went to Ephesus and Philippi and Thessalonica and Corinth. And I think those, those names, like, like Galatia, Eph Ephesus, Philippi, you know, they, they would be familiar to you because we have letters in, in the New Testament written to the churches where he went on his missionary journey to plant church, the churches. So he, on his first missionary journey, we see that he went to Galatia. Well, we've got the letter of Galatians. He also went to uh, Ephesus and Philippi. We see that we have a letter to the Ephesians and, and Philippians. Went to Thessalonica. We've got two letters to, uh, to the Thessalonians and Corinth. We've got two letters to the Corinthians. Uh, Paul wrote letters to the churches that he planted in order to help them through a couple of, uh, couple of things that, that, he, uh, that, that they needed. Then he went back to Jerusalem. And uh, when he went back to Jerusalem after his missionary journeys, he had planned to go to Rome. And that, that's partly why we have the letter uh, of, uh, of Romans. While he was in Rome, or while he was going to Rome, that's when he wrote Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians and, and Philemon. Of course, he was, he was under God, he, guard. He was arrested, and uh, he wanted to go to Rome. He felt God calling him to go to Rome, but he didn't get to Rome the way that he felt he was going to. He was arrested. And then it looks like he was released and went on a fourth missionary journey when he wrote 1 Timothy and Titus. And while he was Rome, he wrote 2 Timothy. And as history would tell us, as tradition would tell us anyways, that's when he was, that's when he was martyred. Let's talk about the setting of the uh, letter of Romans. Um, he wrote the letter while he was in Corinth. Uh, the Corinthian church was a very difficult church plant. It, Paul had his hands full. And if you read 1 Corinthians, you can see why. A ton of stuff that was happening in the church that should not have been happening in the church was happening in the church. While Paul was in Corinth, around AD 57, so not long after the resurrection of Jesus, around AD 57, he wrote this letter while on relief work 
for Jerusalem. He's going around collecting money, bringing that money back to Jerusalem in order to help with a famine. And it was his desire that after he dropped off that money to Jerusalem, he wanted to travel to Rome. Let's talk about the audience. Uh, Christians in Rome. So Paul wanted to write this for the Christians who lived in Rome, the city of Rome. It, this, was, this was the capital city of the Roman Empire. It was the largest city in the world at this time. It had a very large uh, J uh, Jewish population. They were all deported from Judea. And so they, they were all in Rome. Probably they didn't want to be in Rome. Many gods and also emperor worship. Big deal uh, for, for Christians in, uh, and Jews in the, um, in the Roman Empire who were in Rome once a year. They had to, uh, they had to declare that they believed there was no God above, above Caesar. And if they didn't do that, then there was huge penalties. I mean, one of the penalties was death penalty. If they got off easy, they lost property and, and their ability to buy, buy and sell. So it was, it was pretty intense to be a Christian uh, in the city of Rome, and yet we see a vibrant church in Rome. Christians and Jews were viewed as atheists in Rome. And here's why. Because there were many gods in the Roman Empire, and, and Rome was the seat of the Roman Empire, and the Caesar himself was a god, because the Christians only believed in one god, not many gods, um, they were actually seen as atheists. How could you not believe in all of these gods? What do you mean you only believe in one god? Which is kind of kind of strange. Let's talk about the church at Rome. Uh, we have no idea who founded the church in Rome. No idea. It was, um, it was a collection of, of house churches, both Jews and Gentiles, throughout Rome. That um, no, no central leadership, no central location, uh, probably because of the persecution there. They, they may have been hiding or something and staying safe in their house churches, but they were doing very, very well. It was multicultural, of course, because Rome was very multicultural. Um, so we had Jews and Gentiles, and Gentiles included almost everybody that you could possibly think of in the, in the empire. It was united and well known for their faith. So right across the empire, uh, it began to be known that Rome had some pretty healthy churches there. Let's talk about the occasion and purpose of writing. First of all, it was to prepare for his coming. Paul had not yet met any of the churches, uh, small house churches that were in Rome. So this letter was a way of introducing himself to them and, and greeting. Uh, this is his personal credibility and, and theology within this letter for clarity. Um, many, well, I don't know about many, but there were some people who were sending false letters on behalf of Paul. And then he had, Paul had the Judaizers chasing him down as well from, from church plant to church plant. And there were people writing letters on behalf of Paul saying, this is really what Paul says. And then going and preaching and saying, this is really what Paul means. And so there was some confusion about what Paul's theology was and what he was teaching. So, so this letter of Romans is, is a clarity, is clarification on what Paul's views are and what Paul's theology was and what he was going to be teaching while he arrived in, in Rome. So this is a big defense against errors. And one of the biggest reasons Paul writes this is because the Roman church, they didn't have Bible. They didn't have um, any, um, any Christian literature around. So what Paul is doing, very importantly that we understand this, what Paul is doing with the letter of Romans is he's making this a Bible for those who have no Bibles. That's what the letter of Romans was always supposed to be. It was a Bible for those who have no Bibles. So which is why I've, I've entitled this series Christianity 101, because this is really Paul's treatise on, on Christianity. This is where Paul just, he doesn't do this in any of his other letters. He takes time to truly explain the basics of Christianity because this is being sent to a group of, a group of people that don't have Bibles. So this will be their, their supplement. This will be the Bible for, for them. If I could summarize the message of Romans, this would be the summary of what we're going to see as we, as we read the letter together. Paul talks a lot about sin, particularly in chapter 1, verse 18, to chapter 3, verse 20. Paul, Paul spends a lot of time talking about sin and sin's effect on, on us and, and what the position that we find ourselves because of sin. Then second of, he, second of all, he talks about salvation. So in chapter 3, verse 21, to chapter 5, verse 22, Paul says, spends a lot of time talking about salvation and what that means. Then he moves on to spiritual growth. 
in chapter 6, verse 1 to chapter 8, verse 18, that's what Paul is talking about, spiritual growth. How do we, how do we live as believers? And then in 8.18 to 11.36, he switches topics again, and he talks about God's sovereignty, how God is the, is the biggest boss in the law. He's, he's the highest authority. And then finally, in chapters, chapter 12, verse 1 to chapter 15, verse 13, he talks about service, what, what our service looks like as believers. Let me summarize the vital statistics of the letter of Romans so we have a clear, concise uh, idea of where the letter of Romans is going and what it looks like. So the purpose of the letter of Romans is to introduce Paul to the Roman church and to give a sample of his message before he arrived at Rome. Uh, Paul was the author of the letter of Romans. Uh, Ro so Romans. His audience were the Christians in Rome and believers everywhere, so this applies to us as well. The, the date of writing is about AD 57. He writes from Corinth as he was preparing to visit Jerusalem uh, on, uh, on aid. Uh, the setting, apparently Paul had finished his work in the east and he planned to visit Rome on his way to Spain after first bringing a collection to Jerusalem for the poor Christians there. They, they had a famine that he was trying to help with. The Roman church had a majority of Gentiles, but it also had a strong Jewish minority. So it was a majority of Gentiles, but the Jews are the ones who kind of really knew what they were talking about. So a uh, strong minority Jewish presence. Here's a key verse to summarize everything we're about to learn in Romans. There's one key verse that will help us to keep everything in context. Uh, chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. At the end of the letter of Romans, we will truly be able to understand this sentence Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Key people in the document are Paul and Phoebe. Uh, key place is Rome, because he's talking to the Romans. And here's the key features of the letter of Romans. Uh, Paul wrote Romans as an organized and carefully presented statement of his faith. The concise Christian message for those without a Bible. Paul's flow of thought, sin, salvation, spiritual growth, sovereignty, and service all play out in, in the letter of Romans. Romans has a fairly simple outline. I'm going to share it with you now here. So first of all, in chapter 1 all the way to chapter 11, verse 36, Paul really shares about what to believe. Talks about the sinfulness of humanity. He talks about the forgiveness of sin through Christ. He talks about freedom from sin's grasp. And he talks about Israel's past and present and future. After that, after he teaches us what to believe, then he talks about how to behave. And he talks about uh, personal responsibility. And then he ends with some, with some personal notes. This collection of material that I'm giving you, this, this, this video series that we're going to be journeying on together, now this all doesn't come out of the, the greatness of my, of my brain, which you can kind of see almost because my hair is getting translucent a little bit. This, uh, this comes from a lot of different sources, and if you don't have the, the booklet and you're just watching the videos, uh, let me tell you what some of those sources are. This is where I'm getting a lot of my material, not all, but a lot of my material from. A Life Application Bible Commentary on Romans, that's a good source. Life Application uh, New Testament Commentary. Uh, New Bible Commentary, 21st Century Edition. Uh, Warren Wearsby's Nelson Quick ref Reference, chapter by chapter Bible commentary. Sometimes I just needed some quick reference notes, so I, I use that. New Concise Bible Dictionary, uh, Romans, Tyndale New Testament Commentaries, Romans, The Christian Story by F uh, Fisherman Bible Study Guides, and Romans Life Challenge Series. I've got the ISB numbers for all of those, and if you'd like to uh, pick up one of these PDFs or be at the church and pick one of these up from the church, then you'll see all the ISB numbers there. So that's the background of the letter of Romans. In our next uh, video, we're going to be looking at, at the text.